Hey there, are you wondering how much it costs to replace a roof in Austin, San Marcos, the New Braunfels, Central Texas area? Stay tuned and I'll tell you all about it. And as a bonus, I'll tell you what to look for in a new roof and what you want to avoid. Stay tuned. Here, just a quick video. Are you needing to replace your roof system and wondering how much does it cost to replace an old roof system in the Austin, Central Texas area? On average, it's about $15,000 to take off the old roof system, properly dispose, and put back a new roof system. But there's much more to it than that. We've been doing roof systems since 1974 when my father started the company. Um, there's a lots of ins and outs, and I'll tell you what, a lot of contractors out there are cutting corners, and I'll tell you what to watch out for if you're getting a new roof system. One of the big things to watch out for is really basic roofing 101, starter strip. A lot of the contractors out there will take a three tab strip shingle, spin it around, they'll use that for a straight line and call it good for a starter strip. No, that's not how you do it. You're gonna be having wind uplift failure at that leading edge because they cut corners and didn't use the right product. This right here is a, a pro start starter system that goes right on your eaves to ensure that your roof is going to be double right there and a lot stronger. A lot of builders will put 24 inch valley flashing and call it good. Well, over time, we've been doing this a really long time and trust me, over time, when you nail that valley flashing in, uh, when you go through the freeze thaw cycle, you get a thermal fissure from nail to nail, you'll get a fine crack where that metal, that valley flashing is nailed into the decking and you're gonna wind up with leaks. We use 36 inch waterproof membrane on all our valleys. It's the best way of doing it because I guarantee you, you go out in your front yard and you look around your neighbors and you'll see valleys that are loaded with leaves, branches and debris. That right there is a recipe for failure. As water is running down that slope and it gets to that intersection, and make, which is your valley, and that those leaves and debris are there, it slows the water from getting off the roof, it dams the water, and you wind up with roof leaks. Over time, those damp shingles will deteriorate the roof uh, shingles, and you, you wind up with roof leaks. With our system, you don't have to worry about that. Plumbing vent flashings, that's another biggie, and it drives me nuts. Contractors will use, they're called three-in-one auto caulks. It's a, it's a rubber gasket that goes around your white pipe that you see sticking up out of your uh, decking, and they'll just use that. And that black neoprene is in the sunlight, in the direct sunlight, all day long. And it just wears down the sun's UV, tears it down, and it opens up and you got a roof leak. So if you have a roof leak in your kitchen, your bathroom, I pretty much guarantee you they cut corners. Instead of using lead flashings like we do on every penetration, every plumbing vent penetration, instead of doing it the right way, they'll cut corners to save money and it'll cost you uh, just a few years down the road. Venting your attic space, that is so important. If you don't have proper ventilation in your attic space, you'll void your warranty. If you don't have proper attic ventilation, what you're doing is you're taxing, you're overworking your air conditioning system. Your HVAC system is going to be stressed because all that hot air is trapped inside your attic space. And it's like a electric blanket on your ceiling throughout your entire house. And your AC is working that much harder to try to overcome that hot air. This is just plain old fashioned physics. We use a vented ridge system across your main ridges and physics, hot air what? It rises and it goes right up and out of your house. So no more hot air in your attic space, no more extra work for your HVAC and it's pure simple physics. The hot air rises up and out of your attic space. Turbines, they don't get it done. That, that's a very limited area that they take care of and it's mechanical. And over time with bird strikes or tree branches, they get out of uh, round and they just spin around and walk, walk, walk. 
or they'll stop spinning all together and then you have a 12 or 14 inch hole in your roof. You don't want to do that. There's much better ventilation systems out there. And trust me, I've put probably thousands of miles of vented ridge systems up with absolutely zero failure. Three tab shingles versus laminate shingles. Uh, the three tab string shingles, that's a three tab strip shingle. That's a builder's grade roof shingle. Uh, you'll see that on, a lot on your new construction. Um, if you go out in your front yard and you look at your neighbor's home, if you can see vertical lines and you can see each tab, that's a, that's a strip shingle. That's a 20 or 25 year strip shingle. That's the lowest grade shingle you can put on your roof. That's why a lot of builders use those because they're cutting corners. Uh, a lot of contractors out there will use those because they're trying to save themselves money, uh, but it's gonna cost you further down the line. If you can't see those strips, uh, it, chances are it's a dimensional, a laminate shingle. Those are much heavier shingles and they're a lot longer lasting and they look great. Underlayments, no more 15 year or 30 year uh, underlayment. We only use synthetic underlayment. Over time, the 15 pound and 30 pound underlayment starts to dry out. It's asphalt, it's impregnated with oils. And over time, they dry out and they get, uh, they just start cracking and water can get through. These synthetic underlayments are incredible. They'll last a very, very long time and you'll be able to go years and years and years, the life of the roof itself, and not have to worry about failure in your underlayment. Nails versus staples. I'll tell you what, my guys love staples and I'll tell you why. When we go to a house and it has a shingle that's been stapled down, it comes up in sheets. We get a shovel, get one end started, and it just comes up in big old sheets. We love tearing them off because they're so easy. And why is it so easy to tear off? Because they don't hold. They don't have the holding power of an inch and a quarter roofing nail. We only use inch and a quarter, as per manufacturer specifications, we only use inch and a quarter roofing nails. When you're trying to get an uh, old roof off that's been nailed down, you're up there with a shovel beating that roof off. It takes so much work to get those shingles off. You see a, tear, a wind blown roof where there's big sheets of shingles off, 99% of the time, that roof will staple down. Do not, do not go that route. And if you go with us, you don't have to worry about it because we won't. We only use inch and a quarter nails. Bottom line, my father started this company and all this back in 1974. And he taught me a very real valuable lesson. If you're gonna do it, do it right or don't do it at all. The name of the game in our business is doing the job properly with the proper materials. So when these big Texas thunderstorms roll through in the middle of the night, we're not worried about it because we've made the valleys waterproof. We did the starter course properly. We use nails, not staples. We use lead flashings, not the three-in-one auto caulks we did it right so we don't have to worry about it if you're looking at getting your roof replaced we don't charge a thing to come out there and give you an estimate if you have a bunch of estimates i'll sit down with you and i'll go over detail by detail to detail about what sets us apart and why you're probably going to want to go with us after you look at what it really takes to put down a quality roof system that you're not going to have to worry about in the middle of the night when it's storming thanks for watching